Well, the Sunday morning news shows were all abuzz yesterday with post-Trump conviction stories. Over on Meet the Press, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries was interviewed by Peter Alexander when posed with the question of whether this case would have been pursued against somebody else other than Donald Trump. Jeffries' direct no-nonsense response could be the best counterpoint to the hysterical outbreak of MAGA persecution fever. And while that fever is self-inflicted, Jeffries lays out a stone-cold truth that's both direct and irrefutable. But before we see that checkmate response by Jeffries, let's keep in mind that there are many instances in American history of politicians being accused of and convicted of felonies. Albert B. Fall in the Teapot Dome scandal, 1929. Spiros Agnew in tax evasion. And then there's James Michael Curley, who is elected to office in Massachusetts from prison while serving time for fraud. But after you see this recap from yesterday's Meet the Press, it's worth noting a significant difference in this charge from past examples of felonious politicians. And also, pay close attention to Hakeem Jeffries' knockout response to the possibility of an appeal and reversal. I want to start by asking you about this historic verdict. President Biden opened his remarks on Friday saying it is irresponsible for anyone to say the verdict was rigged just because they do not like it. This crime was more than eight years old. There are questions about the validity of the legal theory, uh, untested legal theory that was used to prosecute it. Would this case have been brought against anyone other than former President Trump? Yes, of course. This verdict in the case of People v. Trump was a validation of the American judicial system. Donald Trump was entitled to the presumption of innocence. He received it. Donald Trump was entitled to a trial by a jury of his peers. He received it. Donald Trump was entitled to a vigorous defense. He received it. Twelve jurors, twelve American citizens, after five weeks of a trial, evaluated the facts, the evidence, and the law, and came to a unanimous decision as it relates to convicting Donald Trump on 34 felony counts. That is an affirmation of the American Co judicial system. This is America. We are not a system that is occupied by a monarch or a king or a dictator. We are a democracy, and in a democracy, no one is above the law. Congressman Jeffries, Donald Trump's attorney, as you've certainly heard, said that they will appeal the verdict. If it is overturned on appeal, will you accept that result? Yes. Simple as that. Wow. No hemming, no hawing, no doublespeak, no factual fluster. Rather, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries offered a direct response and a direct reply. His demeanor and composure is a refreshing change from the convoluted panic patter from blown back Republicans as they watch their chosen one take one step closer to Rikers Island. And props to Jeffries for his commitment to accepting any outcome from a Trump appeal. Not like his Republican colleagues or any of the other apoplectic apologists and whining Nellies that have all been wringing their hands on every channel since the verdict was read. No, instead, Jeffries is an example of a careful legislator vowing to represent the rule of law no matter the outcome. And while all felonies are felonies under that rule of law, and no one man is above that rule of law, the stoic response Jeffries offered does not change the facts that the details of this conviction will echo in the annals of history. A former president stands convicted, not for, say, run-of-the-mill tax evasion charges, but for a hush money payment his attorney, Michael Cohen, made to an adult film star, Stormy Daniels, in the days of the 2016 election. Does this give him a special place in political purgatory? Well, that will be left to the judgment of time. But in the present, the judgment of 12 of his peers is that former president and current GOP nominee Donald J. Trump is guilty as charged.